All right, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. All right, ladies and All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Atrium Health Ballpark for Game 2 of our Division 3, our D3 Showcase, again, presented by the Kannapolis Cannonballers. We're going to be having two of our Division 3 best, Washington Lee and also Keystone. Again, these are two programs that are coming uh, from out of state, and man, this has been an awesome tournament so far. We had an absolute beauty game in the first as Mary to College ended up falling in that first game, but man, they had a decent crowd out here on hands, and of course, uh, uh, there's a couple other schools that are going to be doing some alumni association parties. I believe Marietta is going to be doing a breakfast slash brunch tomorrow for a few hours, so uh, of course, this may not be the Kannapolis Cannonballer season, and their opening day, but man, it feels like opening day out here. A few hundred people, I would say four or five hundred people have already come to the first game. It's actually a free event, and so we've had an awesome crowd come in from the city of Kannapolis. We'll go ahead and jump into who we have out here. This is Nathan Hinckley, the right-handed pitcher out of Bradenton, Florida, the senior. Right-handed pitcher wearing number 5-0 up there in the stripes. Love it with the Giants across the chest. As the first pitch will be delivered here to Luke Erdman, the third baseman of Washington and Lee Generals. And we are officially underway as the 0-1 pitch will come here. Again, coming to the hands of Nathan Hinckley. As the righty will deliver, and this one is poked the other way, and it will find the concourse to the right side. Again, Atrium Health Ballpark just built, what, about two years ago. Of course, the Kannapolis Cannonballers had their opening season canceled. So last year in 2021 ended up being the inaugural year here in K-Town. Pitch number three on the way, a curveball will slide out of the hands of Nathan Hinckley as Luke Erdman will now have a 2-1 pitch. Excuse me, a 1-2 pitch coming his way. Zach Perkins, Brian Wickman, and Mitchell Salvino. The three guys do up next. That's fouled off. And appreciate Melissa Clark and also Stephen Long running the video production crew here tonight. And supplying some video. And my name is Trevor Wilt. Welcome in here. Streaming live on YouTube. Here's the pitch from Hinkley, and it's fouled off again. Yeah, a tall glass of water at the plate for the leadoff guy, don't you think? Luke Erdman. Calls him a utility guy. Junior, 6'4", 215 pounds as your leadoff man. Here's a pitch from Hinkley, and the curveball is hit on the ground and it will be picked up in foul territory. Third baseman making a nice play on it across his body, but again, all for nothing as the third base umpire. Letting us know a tad bit late after the throw that it was indeed foul. And the head coach for Washington and Lee is Ted White in his fifth season. Jamie Shevchik with Keystone College, the Giants. This is their first game of the season as Washington and Lee, the Generals, are already 4-2. Trying to BYOE, bring their own energy over there in the first base dugout. And that pitch will miss the strike zone. They take us to a two and two count. And of course, a nine inning affair here on opening day. Two more days to go as this one's hit on the ground. Shortstop has it. Ethan Zaludi, he'll go across the diamond, right to the chest of Brian Wickman. And that is out number one as Luke Erdman. Grounds into the 6-3 put out. Again, six foot four. That's a big man as your leadoff guy. We'll see what he does the rest of the night, but 0 for 1 after his first at bat. Left fielder wearing number four here, Zach Perkins. Again, they're going to go with the blue tops with the W and L logo. He'll swing through the first one, Will the Southpaw at the plate, and Zach Perkins. 
Perkins, a junior, six foot two, 190 pounds out of Vienna, Virginia. I believe a transfer out of there out of James Madison, the Dukes, JMU. This one's a little cue shot off the end of the bat. Two hopper to the third baseman, but easy doing. He'll go across the diamond. And again, right to the big man of Brian Wickman over there as Perkins is out on the 5-3. So right now, the righty Nathan Hinckley living low in the zone. And that's resulted in two ground balls to the left side. First baseman wearing number 13. This is Brian Wickman as Wickman... Senior, 6'3", 205 pounds, out of White House Station, New Jersey. Went to Hunterdon Central Regional School. This one is walked down to left field, giving Jason Zach Perkins over his left shoulder, and he's able to make the grab just shy of the wall, approaching the warning track. A nice track down there for Zach Perkins, and it is a 1-2-3 inning. For Nathan Hinckley, again, the senior out of Florida. We'll go ahead and go to a quick break. Again, D3 Showcase, the inaugural one here in Kannapolis, North Carolina at Atrium Health Ballpark. Welcome back here to Atrium Health Ballpark. Again, home of the Kannapolis Cannonballers. But here tonight, of course, and here this weekend, it is home to the Division Three Showcase as Jason Thomas of Keystone College, the Giants, will come to the plate. And he's way behind on the righties' delivery and Jack Cope. He's again, Washington Lee now out there on defense. Again, blue tops with the gray bottoms. The white but black pinstripes there for the Giants at the dish. As that's fouled off. And this is Jason Thomas. In the first game of the season for the junior out of Miami, Florida. Good build, good body from the right side. As the 0-2 will miss upstairs. Now a 1-2 count coming here to the leadoff hitter in Mr. Thomas. In Washington Lee, this is their seventh game of the year. As this one's hit, weakly to the third baseman he's in is Luke Erdman. He'll go across the diamond, and he gets his man 
and Jason Thomas by a step or so as Chris Hatsall will now come to the plate, the left fielder. Chris Hatsall. Hatsall had a really nice grab out there in left field where he tracked it down, and I believe the he might have got a little bit of that camera angle out there in left field. One of the blind spots we got out here, but nonetheless, we'll try to walk you through with the play-by-play. -play. And the righty will come set out of the stretch, and the pitch is a called strike on that outer corner. And we'll give you the defensive setup here by Washington and Lee. And Luke Erdman just made the play at third base. Ethan Zaludi, he's at shortstop. This one's hit over the second baseman's head. Zach Sinders on a line off the bat there of Hadsaw. He's in safely at first base after Mason Satterfield, the right fielder, was kind of toying with him for a second, baiting him on the throw. That's our first hit of the ball game right there. Again, off the bat, sharply of Hadsaw. Just went the other way with a nice piece of hitting right there for Hadsaw. The junior out of Pennsylvania. And Keystone out of Pennsylvania, their head coach is Jamie Shevchik. There's a call strike to Vince Montone, the first baseman. The three-hole hitter as Adam Kelly, the designated hitter, he sits on deck. And J.D. Barrett, he's in the hole. Here's the pitch. I just missed it. J.D. Barrett, wasn't that the... Quarterback at Ohio State, that was J.T. Barrett. Hey, maybe they're related. You never know. We'll have to look into that. We'll get our statistician to look into that one. And Washington Lee here in Keystone, D3 Showcase, kicking things off for Keystone this year. What a nice opening ball game, opening venue here in the revitalized and beautiful downtown Kannapolis. There's a strike. Now one and two the count. Keystone founded in 1868. As this one is fouled off. So one and two count here in the home half of the first inning. Again, a runner at first base. Not a very big lead over there. Brian Wickman, he is holding him on. Adsall. It's a nice secondary and watches that pitch go away. Does Montone. And now it takes us to a two and two count here with one out. Double play still in depth. So, of course, that's or intact. So, of course, that's what they're playing up the middle. Although the shortstop and Ethan Zuluda is playing a tad bit into the 5 6 hole. Swung on a miss at the play. Throw down to second base. That one's going to scurry out to the outfield. But the shortstop and Zuluda is able to track it down to keep. Hadsall over there at second base. Again, Montone, he is going to sit back to the dugout. That is strike out number one on the day for either team. A stolen base for Hadsall. And now Adam Kelly, designated hitter, will come to the play. So again, Keystone the College, 1868. You know, Keystone the Beer introduced in 1989 as well. Wild pitch throw to third base is not in time. He'll slide in safely right there. Adam Kelly will now have a duck a little bit closer to the home plate pond, that is, as that's going to be Hadsall. Showing the speed out there is Chris Hadsall. And they don't have the, the height and the weight on their guide, but nonetheless, they've got some big guys over there, especially Hatsall moving pretty well. I'll take that one away. Now two and the count. Still two outs though, so Jack Cope can still possibly get out of this bad boy. Unscathed. He'll come set right above the belt loop. The pitch will miss low. Here to Kelly. And now he's got a 3-0. Possibly going to try to Pitch around him to then create a force at second as well. And get to J.D. Barrett. The pitch to the play way outside, can't find it. 
And that's a four pitch walk there to Adam Kelly. So we've had so far here in this inning, if you're joining us a tad bit late, a 5-3 put out here in the home half of the first, a single, a strikeout, a hat saw stolen base a second, and then he advanced the third on a wild pitch with Adam Kelly at the plate who just walked. Still two outs, J.D. Barrett, catcher now at the plate. This one is driven out in the right field, a deep fly ball, right fielder tossing and turning, Satterfield at the warning track, he's able to camp underneath it and make the grab. J.D. Barrett, man, he just got underneath that puppy. That would have been a three-run shot as he'll show off the locks with the helmet flying off, talking to his first base coach, knowing that he just missed a three-run dinger. We'll go to the second inning. When we come back, still no score. Welcome back here to the historic and the beautiful downtown Kannapolis. I'm Trevor Wiltz, and you are watching Keystone, Washington Lee. We'll go to the second inning after, again, J.D. Barrett flying out to deep right field, almost one of the deepest parts of the ballpark. A three-run shot, no more. Mitchell Salvino, the designated hitter, will step in. First pitch, he was way out in front of the off speed out of the hands of Nathan Hinckley. He'll kick and fire. And fouled off back behind home plate. Again, in minor league baseball, we allow all fans to keep the baseballs as souvenirs, but in this tournament, we are not doing so. So, heck, even the ones that go out, they may be having to run those puppies down. I heard there's a couple players on each side that will be in charge of going after the foul balls. That's a D3 grind right there, isn't it? Here's the one-two pitch. Fouled off and goes underneath the wickets of the catcher in Jordan Cooner. And Jason Thomas over there at third base. Brian Whitman at first. John Raymond out in center. Zach Perkins at left and Mason Satterfield out there in the right field. Salvino. This one is golfed into left field. Left fielder, though, and Zach Perkins is able to jump underneath it. And Salvino is out on the F7. That's the second out that Zach Perkins has recorded out there in left. Jaden Keener. One out step to the plate. And the right-handed pitcher out of the Washington Lee University system popped up to the catcher. He can't find it. I don't think anybody can find it. It was found up behind us, I believe. And there's an 0-1. Pretty solid career that he's done in four years. So I believe this is now the fifth year for Nathan Hinckley. Maybe using that COVID year. Someone's got to do it. 3-2-8 ERA. 2018, 2.76 ERA in 2019. As this one is fouled off, and it's going to go back down to one of our Cannonball season ticket holders, Miss Lori Van Wallendale down there making the grab. 
Nice snag by her. Wearing her Cannonballers jersey, her Starry Night jersey that she received last year. Here's the pitch to the plate. And of course, all you fans listening back home that are fans of Washington and Lee and Keystone have no clue what that is. But hey, Homeland Cannonballers, we are the single A affiliate of the Chicago White Sox. This one is peppered down the right side. Given Chase is the big man in Wickman, but he'll run out of real estate. And that one will be sent over there to our main gate by gate one. Went six and two last year with one complete game to Nathan Hinckley. 4.11 ERA. He's had six CGs, complete games, in his four years. He got a stud up there in the mound. Renaissance man. Curveball will slip out of his hands a little bit, end up high, two and two the count. Here with one out. About 20 minutes past first pitch. As a curveball will find the dirt. As this one is scorched through the left side, off the bat, out into left field. And that's going to be a base hit off the bat of Keener, the catcher. As now Ethan Zaletta, the shortstop, will step to the plate. You know, my first time ever covering these guys, Washington and Lee, and of course Keystone. I know some of the fa some of the, the family members are probably saying, "Hey, you're saying the defender's wrong." Well, quite frankly, I am. So hey, we're trying to work through some of the uh, we're trying to work through some of the kinks as well over here, getting ready for opening day, shall we? That pitch is in there for a strike. So I'll have to go. I'll go back by in a little bit and, and, and switch things up. But nonetheless, I know everyone's just enjoying the feed. Still no score here at the top of the second inning. Coming set. Throw to first. Not going to be in time. I knew I was saying some of the guys' names too many times. I was like, this doesn't make any sense. This one's hit on the ground, past the third baseman, diving. And that will be gobbled up by the left fielder. He's able to cut it off before he gets down into the corner. So he holds the runner at second base and Jane and Keener. But Ethan Zuleta, the shortstop, follows up Keener's single with one of his own. And again, that did trickle out to the outfield, but a nice play out there in left field by Chris Hadsall. So now two guys out there in first and second. Getting a little nippy over here in the press box and down there around an HML ballpark. See jackets coming on, got some blankets out there as well. But still some better baseball weather than you're gonna find up there in Pennsylvania where Keystone Giants reside. Yeah, apparently they're getting snow up there. I know they're getting a lot of snow up in Boston, too, I believe. A couple PA natives in the, on the staff of the Canapolis Cannonballers, one of those being our senior ticket sales executive in Walker Brook. He's from Pittsburgh. Big Pitt That's what we like to call him around here. It's a swing and a miss. At the plate here from John Raymond, the center fielder. And runner at first base, that's Zaletta. And second base, it's Keener. Three-man umpire committee out here. Opening day for Keystone. Here's the pitch. Fouled off. Takes it to an 0-2 count. Yeah, so about a 40-degree difference between what it is in Kannapolis, North Carolina, K-Town, as it's known in the biz. And also comparing that to 
where Keystone is up there in PA. It's 26 degrees there and about 20 er, and about 65 here, 66 here. After the ball in the dirt, here's the one, two. Again, we're here in the top of the second inning. No winner at third base. As pitch to the plates, ooh, caught looking on the off speed. John Raymond will go down on strikes. That's a big second out right there for Nathan Hinckley as number 14 second baseman Zach Cinders will now stand in. And they had the Generals as their last name on the back of all of their blue jerseys. He'll dig in from the right side with his blue Nikes on as well. And that pitch just misses the strike zone. One or no. We appreciate everybody tuning in and joining us here in Kannapolis, North Carolina. And Trevor Wilt here with you. Hope you all are enjoying your weekend, the start of your weekend as well. There's a swing and a miss at the plate from Zach Sinders. 1-1 one, one count now with two outs. And Sinders is a fly ball or a ground out or possibly even a strikeout away from getting out of this bad boy. Curveball, he completely befuddles him at the plate. It was a check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did, said the home plate umpire. And now we have a one and two count. Big pitch coming out of the stretch here from Nathan Hinckley. Runners at first and second base. They've been there for a while. Can he strand them? Hinckley will find the pitch. Will come set and deliver. Curveball is walloped past the diving third baseman. That one's going to roll to the corner. Coming in to score one run. Play at third base. He is safe over there at third. He apparently got underneath the tag. The run comes in to score. And he's safe at third base. That's going to go down as a double for Zach Sinders as he brings in a pair of runners. Or sorry, that's just Keener coming in to score. Zuleta will be over at third again, just getting in there safely. So our first score of the ball game. It belongs to Keener as he comes in to score, and Cinders sending the runner home. Mason Satterfield, the right fielder at the plate, throw to second base, and it's going to be a wild one, and the run's going to come in to score. A wild throw by the pitcher. I believe it actually got a piece of the body somewhere. I don't know if that was a glove or what. But nonetheless, another run has come in to score. It's Zaletta. And now it's two to nothing. Washington and Lee on top. Here of Keystone. This one's a little cue shot at the end of the bat. It's going to be picked up foul. Umpire needed to check on that one just to make sure that you get hit off the end of the bat. So sometimes it can get a little scuff mark that could affect the way the baseball is, is played. Coming set here is Nathan Hinckley. So Mason Satterfield. This one's hit to the right side, but looks like the first baseman and pitcher will run out of room. So now an 0 2 count. So, and Nathan Hinckley, he was just a pitch from getting out of this with two guys on. And now, a few pitches later, he's allowed two runs. Nathan Hinckley will come set. The pitch from Nathan just misses upstairs. 
and takes us to a one and two cap. And we started off here in the second inning, the top of the second, with Salvino flying out in the left field. Back-to-back -back singles for Keener and Zaluda. Raymond with a strikeout. Cinders with an RBI double down the left field line. And Satterfield now at the plate. Curveball just misses in. And two and two now the count. The two assistant coaches in both respective coaching boxes. As Hinckley will deliver. Swung on and miss. He's able to leave a runner stranded, but he does give up two runs. So the generals of Washington and Lee tack on two runs here in the second inning. We go to the bottom of the second when we return here in K-Town. As we head into the bottom of the second inning, right now Washington and Lee, the Generals, are winning 2-0. to zero. This one's hit on the ground. Good start here for Keystone as R.J. Goldsberry will smack that one through the left side on the ground as the shortstop gets things going. It's the second hit of the ball game already for Keystone. Again, this is just their first game of the season as Washington and Lee has already kind of ironed out some of the wrinkles that they may have as now Evan Falwell, the center fielder, will step to the plate. Sophomore from Tucson, Arizona. That pitch misses low. Again, sometimes I really wish that we would get the, the roster with the, the height and the weight, man, because this, this is a big boy from the first, or from the right side of the plate. Well, I would I gotta, I gotta guess at least six five six six. I know the parents are probably listening back home. They know exactly how big Evan Falwell is. But we do know Big Ev from Tucson, the sophomore. There's a call and strike with one of his buddy and Goldsberry over there at first base. Derek Cancel. And Bobby Pacomi are the two guys to follow, Evan. As the righty, Jack Cope, will dangle the right arm. Now comes set and delivered. There's a call and strike. Two and two here in the home half of the second. And enjoying some nice baseball weather. A lot of fans now, they're coming in and enjoying as the curveball misses low. Heck, we even got people sitting out at the right field bar. It's not even open. That's how much people miss baseball here in Kannapolis, and they're just looking for anything. So for all you fans who were not able to make the trip from Pennsylvania and or Lexington, Virginia, 
as this one is walled down the left field line, but it hooks foul. Inside pitch here from Cope to Falwell. He was able to get his hands around, but he did send it foul. But with you fans that did not make the trip and or could not make the trip, well, there's a couple hundred people in attendance right now. You're just striving for baseball. And they're getting their fix in here. Strike three outside corner, got him looking. It's a late call there by the home plate umpire, but nonetheless, Falwell is down on strikes. That is the second strikeout for Jack Cope. And Jack Cope. The fifth year, six foot five, 200 pounder. And a Chevy Chase, Maryland. What's the landing school? And Wash and Lee out there. As the pitch is going to be a wild one, it goes all the way to the backstop. And Derek Cancel will now have a runner in scoring position on the wild pitch as Goldsberry now at second base. Yeah, again, the shortstop out there for Washington and Lee and Ethan Zuleta. Sophomore, 5'10", 175 pounds. Hopefully his parents made the trip. As this one, it will be fouled out of play. Third baseman gave chase, but to no avail. Hopefully they were in town. They can make the trip. The long trip from Matthews, which is about 20 miles up the road, about 25, 30 minutes. He went to Weddington. So we're counting on them to at least be representing the blue, the gray, and the white. That is Washington and Lee. The pitch, curveball hit in front of the plate. Oh, actually, it spins a little foul. Will be a foul ball. As Jaden Keener was able to hop up from behind the dish, but picks it up in foul ground, says the home plate umpire. We'll tap the plate from the left side of the plate. Will dare cancel. Nice righty lefty matchup for him. The pitch to the plate in the dirt. Runner at second base will stay put. And nice little block there by the catcher and Mr. Keener. And what a beautiful day it was. The last two or three days, guys, it was not the same. It's been rainy. It's been cloudy. We have had no sun, but today the sun shined, knowing we were playing today. Derek Cancel will go down on strikes on the high heater out of the hands of Jack Cope. That's his second strikeout in the row. That's his third of the ball game. And now Bobby Pacomi, the right fielder, will step in. Supporting the lettuce out of the out of the bucket right now is Bobby Pacomi. Wearing number one in the stripes. Bright orange gloves up there. There's a called strike. A nice off speed comes in there for uh, Mr. Cope. There's another called strike. That's Pacomi, not a big fan of that call, but nonetheless, it was made. Now he has an 0-2 pitch coming his way. Runner at second base. That would cut the lead in half if Keystone could get the run across. Here's a pitch from Jack Cope. And a curveball is taken for a ball in the dirt. Up by two runs is Cope out there. 60 feet, six inches away from Bobby Pacomi. Pitch to the plate, misses. So 
And this is the third overall meeting between the two teams. Both playing in 2020 in February on the 21st and 22nd. As Watch and Lee won both of those. Staying alive is Bobby Pacomi as he fouls out and in and out of the mid of the catcher in Keener. As it looked like Pacomi was a tad bit late, but nonetheless was able to get a piece of it. Dangling the right arm right here is Jack Cope. He'll look to second. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Curb on the dirt. Catcher will fire it out of first base right to the chest of Brian Wickman. And just like that, Pacomi cancel. Falwell. All three struck out. Jack Cope strikes out the side after allowing a leadoff single. We'll head to the third. When we come back, Washington and Lee, the Generals, up 2-0 to zero here in KTAP. Welcome back here to K-Town, ladies and gentlemen. Again, we're streaming this live on YouTube and listening around the ballpark of Atrium Health. First pitch misses inside as we head into the top of the third inning. Again, Washington and Lee winning 2-0. to zero. Currently after putting up a two spot in the second inning. A lot of twos right there. This one is hit very high in the right field, slicing right. The wind coming into effect, but... Jumping up underneath that for Keystone is the right fielder, Bobby Pacomi, who just struck out with the runner at second base, representing the fourth strikeout on the night for the righty and Jack Cope. Yeah, I bet you Pacomi's loving the wind out there. He's got the hair flying through it all, doesn't he? Little lefty-righty matchup. Back to the top of the lineup here for Luke Erdman. And he grounded out to the shortstop back in the first inning. He'll foul this one back to us here. Zach, this is Zach Perkins at the plate. Zach Perkins actually at the dish. Again, Luke Erdman just flying out in the right field. So Zach Perkins, who grounded out to third base, back in the first inning. See that curveball miss in the dirt, one and two, the count. And I love the, the keystone look out there and the pinstripes for the college. 
That pitch misses away. Two and two. Nice old logo also for Washington and Lee. Got the W and the L in there. Here's the pitch. This one is hit pretty well out in the straightaway center field. Again, the wind is just knocking the ball down. And the center fielder will be able to camp underneath. And that's Evan Falwell. As that ball was hit pretty hard. And right now the wind is blowing in. So you're going to have to tug that ball down the right field line. If not, if you hit anything out in the left field, it is likely going to just be knocked down by the wind. And I mean, heck, if you if you didn't hit a ball right now that was supposed to go 350, 375 out of left field, it's blowing so hard right now that there's a good chance it may come all the way back to us. This one is fouled up and heading our way, actually. It will fall down right before us. And now two strikes here for Zach Perkins at the plate. Pitch will miss low right there. As the pitch to the plate, it will be a call and strike three as that's one, two, three inning. There for the righty, Nathan Hinckley. As we'll head into the home half of the third. When we come back, Keystone, we got the work cut out for him down 2-0. to zero. Welcome back here to Kannapolis, North Carolina. Trevor Wilde here with you guys as we head into the home half of the third inning. It's a current 2-0 lead for Washington and Lee, the Generals, against Keystone College, the Giants. Back at the top of the lineup, it's Jason Thomas. He grounded out to the third baseman back in the first inning. And back up there on the bump is Jake Cope. He's got four strikeouts already. Well, righty righty matchup here against Thomas. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. This one is swung on and hit over the Atrium Health Ballpark side to our right side as that one will head out of play. In a busy weekend on tap, the Keystone and Marietta. They're going to be playing tomorrow at 10 a.m. in Marietta and Washington and Lee. At 11-15, ooh, Jason Thomas, he's going to get plunked right there. Gets him on his left leg. 
And Thomas reaches on the hit by pitch. Now to bring up Chris Hadsall. And he's the first guy who reached on a hit and also stole second base and reached third on a wild pitch but was stranded after J.D. Barrett got underneath one out in the right field. That was before the wind really kicked up here. And was inches away from a three-run shot, which of course would give them the lead. But nothing happened, and now they trail by two runs. Nice back pick there in the dirt by Jaden Keener. Again, now we're a few innings in. I believe I got most of the uh, positioning right. <laughs> as Hadsall at the plate, trying to add on to his already solid day. There's a strike at the plate, throw down a second. It is not going to be in time. It's a stolen base, the second of the ball game for the Keystone Giants. As now Hadsall and Thomas. Both have a stolen base to their names here on their opening day. Montone, he sits on deck, he struck out back in the first. Nice lead at second base for Thomas. The curveball is gonna be poked out in the right field, gonna be a tough play. Second base will go now, right fielder coming in. He dives and cannot make the grab. Around third base, he's gonna put on the brakes and runners will be stuck at the corners as Chris Hadsall had a ball fall in. Out in shallow right field, a little Duck snort out there as now Vince Montone will come to the plate with two ducks out there on the pond at first and third base. No one at second. And Montone struck out back in the first. If he just puts the ball in play right here, likely will bring in a run. In bottom of the third inning, as fans continue to Come into the ballpark, getting a little chilly up here. Here's the pitch. This one's hit to the right side and out of play as well. And losing a lot of these baseballs, I can tell you that much. A lot of their foul balls, none of them are really going into fan territory for anybody to return those. And Hatsall's at first base. He already has a stolen base here tonight. Very large secondary lead, but he's going to get picked on and not picked off, but just picked on by Jack Cope. He slides that back in safely. Get after a nice inning out there on the bump in the top of the third for Nathan Hinckley. Check swing, did he go? Doesn't matter. Home plate umpire says, I got you. There's a call and strike. Now 1 and 2 the count here to Montone. Good body from the right side. Got those orange batting gloves and the tape job on the left and right forearms. Just needs to hit the ball to the ground up the middle. He'll bring in a run. He watches that one by. It's a fastball. Again, the second baseman in the shortstop, they are playing in double play depth, so they're not playing in. A ball on the ground pass, the pitcher will score. But he swings and misses. And with first base occupied, Hadsall stays there, and Montone is down on strikes for the second time. That's strikeout number five on the day for Jack Cope. Again, the right-handed pitcher for Washington and Lee. Adam Kelly, the designated hitter, will now stand in after his walk back in the first inning. And so Jason Thomas, he's 0 for 1 with a strikeout, or sorry, with a ground out and a hit by pitch. He's standing at third base as the first pitch is swung on a miss, or swung on a foul off right there by Adam Kelly. Chris Hadsall with a single, he's at first base. He's two for two on the day with a stolen base. Vince Montone, he just struck out for the second time here tonight. Adam Kelly, the walk in the first. Gentleman set is Jack Cope. 
Curveball fought off and will be foul. No one to the count. Approaching an hour as we get into the third inning. Tapping on the plate right there is Adam Kelly. And now stepping off the back of the rubber is Jack Cope. Trying to get on the same page with his catcher and Jaden Keener. Looks like they are on the same page. Pitch to the play. This one's walloped into right center field. Center field coming in, and he will not be able to make the grab. Coming in to score, but a play at second base. He's out at second on the force. So coming in to score is Jason Thomas as the runner at first base. Heck, I thought he was going to have a good angle just to get there with ease to second, but he did not read it well at all off the bat and was hosed at second base. I mean, a good play by the center fielder, J John Raymond, sure, but I think it's more of a mishap there by Chris Hadsall. So he is plugged out at second. That's the second out of the inning, Adam Kelly. He will get the RBI. Does he get a single there, or is that a fielder's choice? That's a fielder's choice. So he does take the hit away from Adam Kelly as Chris Hadsall with the base running mistake. This one is fouled off to the left side and out of play. J.D. Barrett, again, he's at the dish after sending one about 350-plus feet out in the right field to the warning track. Came up just a few feet short of a three-run home run back in the first frame. Already with five strikeouts on the day, it's Jack Cope, the righty on the bump. Runner at first, curveball in the dirt. Ooh, beautifully blocked there by Keener. Keeping J.D. Barrett, or should I say Adam Kelly, over there at first. Who again gets an RBI, no hit. Got the headshots for the players up there on the video board as well. I know they were all pretty surprised by that. They're like, wait, we get our headshots up there? I'm like, yes, that's exactly what you get. Treating them like the minor leaguers that they want to be, for sure. Hopefully they ha can have more success than the Canapolis Cannonballers did at their home stadium. Swinging a miss at the plate on some high cheese right there. Three and two the count. And J.D. Barrett. The lefty will choke up from the left side of the plate. Coming set is Cope. Big pitch. And it misses low ball four. Good at bat there. Quality at bat for J.D. As he'll walk freely. To first base. Now two guys on for the six-hole man, the shortstop, number 22 in R.J. Goldsberry. As Goldsberry, he reached base on a single through the left side and was stranded at second base after three straight strikeouts. It's a Falwell cancel in Pacomi. Here's the pitch. Curveball misses outside. And two to one. As Keystone has responded with one hit, one walk, a hit by pitch, and a fielder's choice RBI. To cut the lead in half as this one is hit a mile high in the left field. As going out is the left fielder and the shortstop. It's going to be a tough play. It's going to fall. One run is going to come in to score. Another run will come in to score. And standing up safely over there at second base is going to be R.J. Goldsberry. And I believe we're going to talk to our official score. We're going to wait for him for a second. He's got to deliberate over that. But nonetheless, two runs will come in to score. That's a tough play out there in left field. It should have been caught. But with no one camping underneath it, the shortstop, again, from nearby Weddington High School, just up the road in Matthews, Ethan Zaluda, 
and Zach Perkins, they were not able to communicate. And I'm telling you, that wind is just pushing the ball in. And no one was able to camp underneath it. And that resulted in two runs. And now just like that, Keystone, they're back, baby. And now they got the lead. We'll go ahead and take a quick break. Head coach up there on the bump. All right, after the mount visit right there by Washington and Lee. Now we got Evan Falwell coming to the plate. So that's going to go down as a two RBI double off the bat of RJ Goldsberry. Hey, they don't they don't all have to be home runs. I can tell you that much. They don't all have to be beautiful or sexy doubles, or liners. I mean, that one was a little blooper. And next thing you know, the wind just played with it up in the Kannapolis sky here at HM Health Ballpark and allowed two runs to come in. Fouled off the plate. It's a 1-1 count. And just like that, after one swing of the bat, Washington Lee's Jack Cope, his brilliant outing, is now erased, and he's... Now trailing 3-2 here in the home half of the third inning. Big swing and a miss from the big tall righty, Evan Falwell. Righty-righty matchup in favor of Cope up there, 60 feet, 6 inches away on the bump. Here's the pitch to the plate, swung on a miss. So whatever head coach Jamie Shevchik went and whispered in the ears of Jack Cope had worked and humbled the man. Conned him down, and he picks up his sixth strikeout of the ball game. We'll head into the fourth inning. Gets three to two. Keystone now on top. They were spawned with three here in the home half of the third. Welcome back here to Atrium Health Ballpark, home of the Canapolis Cannonballers. But again, 
home to the Division Three Showcase here this weekend. We appreciate everybody who is now joining us here at HM Health Ballpark. And then, of course, everyone who's tuning in through our YouTube live stream. First pitch out of the hands here of Nathan Hinckley. Coming to Mitchell, Mitchell Salvino. This one's hit on the ground sharply, but foul. As Salvino flew out to left field back in the second inning. Again, we sit here on the top of the fourth. It's a 3-2 to two ball game in favor now of Keystone. As Hinckley will deliver. This one has popped up weekly. First baseman giving a chase. Second baseman coming over as well. Montone is able to camp underneath it as Mitchell Salvino will have to settle for an 0 for 2 day through his first two at bats. Showing the mobility over there is the big man. Jaden Keener, the catcher, will step in from the right side. Here's the first pitch. Just misses the strike zone. High and inside. A single and a run scored back in the second inning. Again, that's where they had two guys come in to score. Two of their two runs. A pitch misses away. 2-0. and oh. And Nathan Hinckley, he threw a decent amount of pitches there in the second inning after 1-2-3 to begin the ball game in the first frame. Gets called strike there from the home plate umpire. And that's Erdman over there at the hot corner at third. J.D. Barrett back behind the plate. This one's fouled off the left ankle. Looks like he's all good to go. Montone over there at first. Goldsberry at shortstop. At second base, it's Derek Cancel. As <laughs> you heard the pitching coach yelling for Nathan Hinckley to step off the rubber, but he's quickly back on. Pitch to the plate, little jam shot in the infield. Hinckley, he says he's got it, but the third baseman will call him off. And again, through the Kannapolis windy sky here tonight, Erdman is able to clamp it down as Keener is out on the P5 in my book for all you keeping score back home. As a shortstop, Ethan Zaletto will now stand in here in the fourth frame. And single and a run scored for him back in the second inning. He smacked one through the left side. Curveball just misses his own. Again, Ethan Zaletta, cool story about him. He's from Matthews, North Carolina. Went to Weddington right up the road. Him and then also Mitchell Salvino, both basically Charlotte natives. Salvino went to Charlotte Catholic. The powerhouse that Charlotte Catholic is. That pitch is fouled in and out of the glove. So again, Mitchell Salvino is the cleanup man designated hitter for the generals of Washington and Lee. And trying to pick up their fifth win here in the early season. Keystone, this is just their first game. Swing and a miss. Nathan Hinckley impressing in his first game. That's his third strikeout of the night. As we'll now head into the bottom of the fourth inning. Three to two, still a lead for Keystone here in KTAP.
little dance cam. Our first one of the 2022 baseball season as both teams kind of get into that, even the umpire as well. Having some fun out here, having a blast at HM Health Ballpark. The inaugural D3 showcase showing bunt. Oh, he gets a piece of the bat and also gets a piece, I believe, of the shin guard of the catcher. After the bunt attempt, there's Derek Cancel, the second baseman. As now the home plate umpire will use his dancing legs to walk the baseball up there to the pitcher and Jack Cope. They'll share a smile or two. Probably talking about the dance moves that they do. In a beautiful Friday night here in Kannapolis. Saturday we have three games. And also one game on Sunday. Here's the pitch. This one's rifled but foul down the right field line. That one scurried its way into the stands. And look at that little fan. He thinks he has a souvenir, but this is not a minor league baseball game, buddy. So you got to give the baseball back. The odds of him doing that are about slim to none, though. But nonetheless, that's what we're trying to promote. Here's the pitch. Curveball will miss in the dirt. As again, Derek Cancel, he struck out swinging in the second inning. Yeah. Getting a little cold, getting a little nippy out here at the ballpark. See the jackets and the blankets for the smart people who came from the north, who came down. They probably came down already bundled after their five, six, seven hour rides. That pitch misses in the dirt. It's a two and two count here on the Bottom of the fourth inning, three to two hour score. Current lead for Keystone. Trying to add on to it. This one's rifled to the right side, past the diving. Zach Cinders at second base, and that's a good way to start it. They try to back pick him over there at first base, but to no avail, Derek Cancel is able to smack one hard through the right side. Man, he's got a smooth looking swing, I can tell you that much. But not as smooth as the hair from Bobby Pacomi. Man, if he doesn't look like he could be on a Keystone beer commercial, I don't know who does. Just with the hair, of course. Talk about an NIL deal waiting for you. If you're Bobby Pacomi. At a Keystone. Sophomore out of Margate, Florida. So I don't think he's to that 21-year-old age yet. So he may have to hold off until his junior or senior year to sign that NIL deal. Or maybe a keystone. Called strike on the inner half right there. As we just clicked into 7.15 for everybody here on the east time zone. Pretty short lead at first base for Cancel. He's going to get checked on, though, by Jack Cope. Still no one warming up in either bullpen. Nice bright orange gloves at the dish for Bobby. Curveball, ooh, hard hack right there. He was way out in front as Jack Cope snapped that one by him. Again, people hanging out there in the right field corona corner, the right field bar, even out there relaxing, chillaxing, being all cool out in the left field berm as well. That one misses in the dirt. Nice block again by Jaden Keener. He's put on a clinic behind the plate. But everyone's got their relaxation goggles on. They're just all hanging out, man. Left field berm is a beautiful place to take in a ball game. Here's the pitch. Misses low. As Cope trying to find the strike zone. Just one more time against the nine-hole hitter and Bobby. 3-2 pitch coming. He'll come set. Cope, the pitch. Runner going. This one's dribbled to the third baseman, but he picks it up in foul ground. So everyone will return to their positions. And we'll do the 3-2 over again. And still no outs here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Now 
I think Bobby, I think he's got the most nicknames on the entire team. I've heard him called about 15 names during this at bat. There's a walk for Bobby as he'll take the 3-2 and a nice quality at bat down to first base. Derek Cancel will head to second base after reaching with the leadoff single. And now Jason Thomas will stand to the plate. As Thomas on the day, he's 0 for 1 with a hit by pitch, a stolen base. A run scored, and also a ground out to third. Here's the pitch. No show bunt. Does he go? Ooh. Hopefully they said. Yeah, I don't, they call that a, a called strike, I believe. They said he got the, the bunt attempt out of the way. But and then they said that he did that it was a called strike and um, from my vantage point I'm not I don't have a monitor in front of me but that looked like a low pitch swing and a miss here for Jason Thomas a leadoff man and looking to expand on their lead up already three to two runner at second base. No outs, and a runner at first. Nice block again behind the play by Jaden. See, so quickly fires that back to his pitcher, and Jack Cope. And as I mentioned that there was no one warming up, it looks like there is a right-hander warming up in the bullpen. Here for Washington and Lee University. Well, back pick to second base. Ooh, in and out of the glove of the second baseman, but he's able to keep it within about 15, 20 feet and track it down. That's Zach Sinders. <laughs> no one at third base coming set is Jack Cope, the pitch. Strike three outside corner, got him looking. Man, is that a late call right there. But nonetheless, call made. And Thomas is going to be down on strikes. That's a seventh strikeout here for Jason Thomas. It's not really an exact late call by the home plate umpire. It's just his delayed call that he does. I guarantee you that. He says it so that everyone downstairs, everyone down on the field can hear it, and then he ends up doing the, the motion, the action, two or three seconds afterwards. First pitch is a off speed, and it misses the zone, 1-0. and oh. As Cinder shadowing the runner at second base and cancel. Strike at the plate, but it's a double steal executed to perfection. As Cancel to third, Pacomi to second. And now a runner is just 90 feet away from scoring with Chris Hatzel at the plate. He's already got a two-hit day and a stolen base to his name. Here's the pitch. And this one is golfed down to right field. Given chase is Mason Satterfield. He'll camp underneath it, and he'll come in to score. Will Derek cancel a sacrifice fly RBI off the bat of Hatzel? And he's had three really good at-bats in the first game of the season. They have now doubled the lead. Have the Giants of Keystone of 4-2 to two now. And a sack fly in the right field, Vince Montone will now come to the play, wearing number seven. He is 0 for 2 on the day. Kelman set, here's the pitch. 
Misses away. I was actually talking to Jamie Shevchik, their head coach, and he actually coaches in the Cape. He coaches in the Cape Cod League, and he was telling me about all the players that the Kannapolis Cannonballers and that the formerly Kannapolis Intimidators have had on his team. That pitch misses low for a ball. 2-0 here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Again, now 4-2 to the lead after scoring three in the third and one here in the fourth. But Jamie and his Keystone squad playing well. Ooh, Jenner's call right there on the 3-0. Now 3-1. But he was telling me that he knew a few of the guys and also there's a Maryland grad who was on his coaching staff. That was good buddies, one of our guys as well. This one is laced up the middle off the 3-1 pitch of Montone. He'll bring in another run. 5-2. Now the lead for Keystone. They keep adding them on. Here in the fourth inning, they're up 5-2. Three-run lead now on six hits. They've had three hits, or sorry, just two hits here in the inning. Montone puts an end to his over two night. He avoids a hat trick as of now with an RBI single. Again, Pacomi comes in to score. Adam Kelly will come to the plate, but it looks like that may not be with the same pitcher out there on the bump and J Jack Cope. I don't know if they're prolonging this on purpose. Having a chat with the catcher right now is the head coach and Ted White in his fifth season. Again with Washington and Lee, the Generals. I mean, he's talking to everybody out there. And yeah, now they're gonna go to the bullpen after a long talk out there. Meeting is kind of adjourned, but nonetheless, we'll go ahead and take a few minute break to let the new guy get out there. Looks like this is going to be number eight in Andrew Flood, the freshman, 5'11, 165 pounds out of New York. What a man has at secondary school. The end of the day for Jack Cope. We'll get you his final line when we come back.
All right, new arm on the mound. This is going to be Andrew Flood. As the first pitch delivered by the 5'11 freshman. Again, out of Manhattan, New York. They swung on a miss there by Adam Kelly. Kelly's, he had a RBI fielder's choice. Had a, actually, he hit out in the center field on the ground. A wild pitch with a runner at first base will allow him to go to second as the catcher and Keener not able to go after that one. That one was way out of the zone. No chance for him to put any piece of material on that. And we're here in the fourth inning. Two outs, a 1-1 pitch. And Washington in the lead trailing 5-2. So that is Montone now at second base after he had an RBI single. That pitch misses out of the zone. In a little colder night and not seeing a lot of sleeves out there from any of the players. Maybe they're getting a little nippy out there. Oh, come set and delivered. This one is hit a mile high down the right field line. First baseman going over, second baseman, right fielder. Who's going to catch it? No one will. It's going to fall on the pitcher's mound out there in right field. So now a couple strikes, a couple balls, and a couple outs. Staying alive here is Adam Kelly. Walked back in the first inning. Again, so he technically got robbed of that single. He did get an RBI, but he got robbed of the single because he hit out in the center field, but then the runner got forced out. He got thrown out at second. Here's the pitch to the plate. Misses upstairs. Here's the pitch. Oh, nice little piece of hitting right there by Adam Kelly. Just stuck his bout out of that one. He's having a laugh with the umpire, and I think the catcher as well, and Keener. I right, said, yeah, you know what? I probably didn't have any business actually hitting that, but stayed alive. 3-2 pitch now coming from Andrew Flood, the newbie. The pitch. This one's hit on the ground sharply. That's going to get through the 5-6 hole. Around third base is Montone. He's getting the wave in. The throw will be up the line, and he will come in to score. Throw to second will not be in time. And that's another run for Keystone. Now up by four runs. They're leading this thing 6-2. to two. As Adam Kelly delivers with an RBI single, reaches second on the throw. As Montone is now the third run to score here in the fourth inning. Back-to-back three-run innings as the hard swing at J.D. Barrett will step in now. As Andrew Flood, the freshman, trying not to be made fresh meat here by Keystone College. The pitch misses low. As Barrett sees that one fall in the strike zone. And a senior out of Pennsylvania. Here in the inaugural Division Three Showcase at Atrium Health Ballpark. That pitch will scurry into the dirt. A nice little snag there by Keener. As the freshman will... Try to warm up his hands a little bit by blowing at him for a second. Again, getting cold rather quick. Probably getting down in the low 50s already. Dropped about 15 degrees over the last probably hour. This one's hit out in the left field, but again, the wind's coming in. So the left fielder, though, makes a running grab. That's Zach Perkins out there. 
And J.D. Barrett is out on the F7. Well, three runs and a couple hits later. It's now a 6-2 lead as we go to the fifth inning here in K-Town. To the fifth inning we go as it's a 6-2 lead now for Keystone. First pitch out of the hands again of the righty and a Washington and Lee University. This is Nathan Hinkley back up on the dish. This one's hit on the ground. Two hopper right to the third baseman. Erdman will go across the diamond as John Raymond, the center fielder, it's currently 0 for 2 now after a backwards K in the second inning. It's a 5-3 put out here. And now Zach Sinders, the second baseman, will stand in. RBI double in the second inning. He was stranded at second base back whenever Washington and Lee scored their two lone runs. Here's the pitch. He'll show bunt right back to Nathan. He'll... Field fire and retire his man on a simple 1-3 put out here in the fifth. So a couple pitches, couple outs. Mason Satterfield, the nine-hole man and right fielder for the Generals, will stand in. A strikeout in the second inning. This is his second and back. Righty-righty matchup for Hinkley. There's a called strike. In top five, it's 7.35 here in K-Town. Here's the pitch from the righty. This one is weakly hit into the infield. Second baseman calls everybody off. Cancel is underneath it. And, man, Nathan Hinckley, a few pitches, a few outs. As he's trying to walk away from, I don't know if that's his head coach or whoever that may be, but right now he's like, hey, I want to stay out there. He's looking at him saying, hey, give me one more. Give me one more. We'll see if Nathan Hinckley gets one more inning as we'll head into the bottom of the fifth. When we come back, it's going to be the six, seven, eight hitters due up for Keystone, the Giants.
So we'll go into the bottom of the fifth inning. It's going to be R.J. Goldsberry, the shortstop, who will lead things off. Here's a called strike. He had a two RBI double out to left field. A little duck snort, if you will. Off his bat, again, he got caught up in the in the wind, and man, it was uh, it was a heckler out there and shadow left field. Ethan Zaletta and Zach Perkins not able to camp underneath it, not able to communicate who's going to get it. You got it, I got it, I got it, you got it, and next thing you know, no one got it, and it was a two RBI double. So he's got two hits on the day to follow that up with a single back in the second inning. Out of the windup, here's a pitch from the freshman. He gets a hard swing and a miss after going with a fastball upstairs. This is the 5'11", 165-pounder, Andrew Flood. Trying to work quickly here. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Off speed, a little dribbler will go foul down third base side. Their third base coach is able to knock it down. Yeah, awesome crowd out here on a Friday night out here in Kannapolis, North Kakalaki. Here's the pitch. Curveball swung and foul tip into the mid as R.J. Goldsberry is down for the first time. Big strike out there for some confidence for Andrew Flood. Again, he came in for Jack Cope, who started the ball game. Jack Cope. The freshman, 6'5", 200 pounds out of Chevy Chase, Maryland in the Landon School. He finished three and two-thirds innings, gave up six hits, six runs. All of those were earned, three walks and seven strikeouts. Again, the final line for Jack Cope, three and two-thirds, six hits, six runs. All of those runs were earned, three walks and seven strikeouts. Andrew Flood. With one out, a 1-1 one, one pitch will come here to Evan Falwell, the center fielder, who is trying to avoid the hat trick. He's got two Ks, one swinging and one looking. He'll watch that one outside, 2-1. and one. I think for the families who ended up making the trip, they're like, you know what? We had time. This was definitely w well worth the trip. Coming down, downtown Kannapolis is beautiful. Again, it's a $300 million project, and you're looking at the center of it all. 2-2. Two -two. Fouled off to the right side and out of play. Yeah, we're right. It was about a $55 million stadium here at Atrium Health Ballpark and revitalizing a old mill town. It used to be called Cannon Mills. That's why we're the Cannon Ballers. As the 2-2 two -two just misses the zone. As Andrew Flood, he was asking where that one missed. Apparently missed down. But if you don't have the chance, make sure you guys come down. Come check it out. As the 3-2 misses away, Evan Falwell, he'll check out first base after the walk. As Derek Cancel will now come to the plate, second baseman. He's one for two. He had a single and a run scored in the fourth inning. And then he struck out swinging, happened in the second. Pretty good lead over there at first base, hopping around, swinging a miss at the plate from Cancel. Again, Keystone, they scored three runs in the third and three runs in the fourth. As we're now here in the fifth, and a swing and a miss again there from Derek. Had a hard hit ball that sneaked through the right side in his last plate appearance. And a white tape job on the left and right wrist. This one is hit our way, fouled back, and of course out of play. Again, this is game two as Christopher Newport already played here today. The 0-2 misses. Now one and two to count. Christopher Newport beating Marietta College just before 
and about an hour and 15 minutes before first pitch of this ball game. 1-2 misses away. 2-2 two and two now the count. And knowing that the home plate umpire has such a late call, you can see Jaden Keener and even J.D. Barrett, they're just framing it a little longer, thinking they're going to get the call. He'll slap it to the shortstop. Zaletta, he'll knock it down, fire to second for one to first. Not in time. So it will be a fielder's choice off the bat of Derek Cancel. He does reach there. Second time that he's reached. Falwell will be put out over at second. That's out number two here in the bottom of the fifth. And now Bobby Pacomi, the right fielder, will stand in. Here's the pitch to the plate. It's fouled off and into the mid. Of the catcher, Jaden Keener. A walk and a run scored in the fourth. And then a strikeout that happened back in the second. He's going to try to bunt his way on. Catcher comes out front. Will fire to first base, and he gets his man. What a beautiful play behind the plate there from Jaden Keener. Nice little 180 scoop. And fired a first. Got his man. 2-3 put out of the books, but it looked a lot harder than that. We go to six. When we come back, it's a 6-2 lead right now for Keystone over Washington and Lee. We'll be right back. Go to the sixth inning, it's six to two. This one's fouled off, hits the left of the Atrium Health ballpark sign over here. Yeah, unless, let's see, looks like Luke Erdman's at the plate. Yeah, unless he's got a, a, a very nice lucrative uh, NIL deal, it would be a lot more money than that to replace that Atrium Health ballpark sign if he does that again. He's 0 for 2 on the day is Erdman. Here's the pitch. Curveball misses in the dirt. I wonder what the craziest NIL deals are out there in college. Because I feel like any company can sign anybody at this time. You see certain players at certain places like down in Louisiana. Of course, you have Raisin Cane. He's got a, a few players that they've signed to go and eat their stuff. And, of course, jump onto some commercials. Here's the pitch. This one's... Hit on the ground of the first baseman, a little cue shot, but able to make the snag on the ground as Montone. He'll step on first. And Falwell over there at first base. Making a snag. That pitch just misses. 
But again, back to the NILs real quick. Again, I feel like Keystone, that's an easy one to go. That you could, I don't know if you could do that, though. Is there, is there limitations to that? Maybe I'm beating a dead horse, and maybe that, there's no way they could even do anything of that nature with a player from Keystone. Sounds in and out of the catcher's glove. They're going to call that actually a strike. But again, just something, something to ponder if you're back home and you're thinking about a good NIL deal for you guys. Can we have Bojangles around here? So I know there's a lot of athletes in the Charlotte area who have teamed up with Bojangles. And back up on the bump, this is Nathan Hinckley. There is a righty warming up in the bullpen as he'll end up walking Zach Perkins. So again, Luke Ergman here in the top of the sixth inning. Grounding into the three unassisted over there. Zach Perkins now with a walk of Brian Wickman, the first baseman. Well, now step to the plate. He's over two. The first four hitters of Washington and Lee have not reached base on a single or any variety of a hit. Zach Perkins, with that walk right there, is the first batter in the first four just to reach base. So again, they did all their production in that second inning. And Perkins is the first batter, the first runner to get on base since Zach Sanders did back in the second inning. That pitch to the plate is fouled off. 0-1-1. Oh, one, one. But again, downtown Kannapolis, again, being revitalized. So there's a awesome place that's going around. And heck, about five or six years ago, this place, someone called it a ghost town. And now you can't find a parking spot anywhere within about a mile of downtown Kannapolis. Having to walk a decent amount. Some of these fans here to the stadium. As this one is rifled off the end of the bat. And the right field off the bat of Brian Wickman. Tossing a turn in. And then right field. Does he make the grab? I believe he does. He catches it. Having a little tough time finding him out there in right field with a little white going on in the screen in our video board. But nonetheless, a nice grab out there by Pacomi as Wickman is out on a loud F9. Man, they would have needed that. Heads up base running from Zach Perkins, able to scurry back to first base to not be doubled off. Will be checked on, but he's back in. Mitchell Salvino, designated hitter, he's 0 for 2. Nathan Hinckley, the pitch, misses away. One or no. And then Roddy is warming up in the bullpen. Again, Mitchell Salvino from Charlotte, North Carolina, Charlotte Catholic. Sometimes whenever there's not a lot of fans out there in the crowd, there's still a decent amount out here today. I'm going to, to be quite frank with you, there's probably a couple hundred. But it's pretty funny whenever you get to see and you get to hear the exchanges of the fans that are uh, running around the ballpark. I just heard one of the fans just say something to the starting pitcher, to Nathan Hinckley, and he just said something right back to him. This one's fouled off into the fan zone. Actually, it's the top of the ballpark in our roof. But one of the fans, he just said something about someone of his family, and he just laughed right back at him to the starting pitcher, and he, he tripped back at him a little bit. So, again, just kind of fun to hear those interactions, trying to find the positives in everything in life. That's what we're trying to do. And Falwell over there at first base. 
Montone out there in center field. Here's a pitch to the play. This one smacked on the ground through the right side around second base. He's getting the wave into third is Zach Perkins and Mitchell Salvino. Just going with the pitch, taking it the other way. Will now put runners at the corners here for Jaden Keener, the catcher. Big piece of hitting right there for Salvino. It looked like he was almost going to get beat on the pitch and just smacked at it and went the other way as it looks like the catcher and J.D. Barrett's going to go up and have a chat with his righty. Go ahead and take a quick break with him. All right, back at it after the quick meeting. And with two outs, first pitch lifted out in the center field, coming in, running. Hat came off, his glasses came off, but Montone is able to make the grab. Again, he originally was the DH, and then he moved out in the center field. And Nathan Hinckley is, that to get at, is able to get af, out of it and after it as he's working his way back into the dugout to be celebrated by his teammates. So he gets Jaden Keener with two guys on, a fly on the center field. So we'll go into the bottom six when we come back here in K-Town. Now in a pitch here for Washington Lee, it's going to be number six, Derek Hughes. As Derek Hughes, a six foot two, 190 pound junior out of Raleigh, North Carolina, went to Ravenscroft School. About two, two and a half hours away from here. He'll face the top of the lineup here for Keystone College. The Giants is one, two, three, Thomas Hadsall and Montone. Here's a 1-1 pitch from the Raleigh native. Sorry, the 1-2 pitch, and it swung on and missed. Comes in, gets his first man via strikeout as Jason Thomas has two strikeouts. He reached on a hit by pitch and scored a run. Also had a stolen base in the third and grounded out to third base. That happened back in the first. This is his third season 
now with the Generals. Gets a high swing and a miss. Does the Washington and Lee righty. Chris Hatzall. RBI sack fly in the fourth. He's had a heck of a day. A single in the third, and then a single and a stolen base in the first. There's another called strike, and coming in and looking solid right now is big number six, Derek Hughes. As the tall righty will deliver. Change up, swung on and missed. Did he get him? No, he did not. They got to throw it down to first base, and they do. And he's out over at first. It's back-to-back -back K's. So we'll end up giving you guys the final line of Andrew Flood in the next half inning or so. And we're in the bottom of the six now. It's Jack Cope, again, three and two-thirds, six hits, six runs, six earned, three walks, seven Ks. There's a call strike. Right now Derek Hughes looking solid. Comes from a very athletic family. He does the righty up there on the bump. Derek Hughes will probably get in attendance as that pitch off the bat of Vince Motone gets fouled off. Father Richard swam at Princeton and mother ran track at St. Joseph's. And he gets a swing and a miss. Is that a was that the perfect? I, I don't know if that was nine pitches right there or ten, but nonetheless, that was almost... An immaculate inning. I don't know if I just missed that or not, but that could have been almost an immaculate inning. I don't know if there was a ball. Might have been nine strikes. I think we just had an immaculate inning, and I just I didn't even notice it. Tip of the cap to you, Derek Hughes. You were immaculate in the six. We got the bottom of six though. When we come back, they still down four six to two. Welcome back here to Kannapolis, North Carolina. Trevor Wild here with you guys as Washington and Lee will send to the play Ethan Zaletta, John Raymond, and Zach Sanders. This is 6-7-8 in their lineup. It's against a new guy, Nick Termini. As we'll get you more on him in just a moment. Freshman at a Clark Summit PA. is quickly up in the count 0-2 against the hometown boy. Just from Matthews right up the road. And Zuleta, a shortstop for the blue and gray. And the stripes up there is Termini. He'll hit 
throw this one, and it's hit on the ground to the shortstop. He'll go right to first. And that is going to be fielded and retired there by the shortstop. And I believe that's Bobby, yeah, Pacomi is now at shortstop. I saw the, the long hair, and I believe that's number one, Bobby Pacomi over there at short. You know, we probably were not made aware of that. 6-3 put out off the bat of Zaletta. John Raymond, he grounded out to third base in the fifth and struck outs looking in the second. Swing and a miss there as well. Bullpens coming in clutch for both teams right now. Yeah, we'll see if the rest of the defense is still the same or not. Coming set, Termini, the pitch. Swing and a miss. John Raymond goes down on strikes for the second time here today. He's 0 for 3. And so far, Nick Termini is wheeling and dealing. RBI double back in the second inning. A ground out back to the pitcher in the fifth. Zach Sinders will step to the dish. Sinders, the second baseman. He's not had a lot of action over there today. Here's a called strike. Looks like the second baseman may be a new one as well. I think we're still trying to figure that out up here. Went to Abington Heights High School. Did turn many. This one's hit on the ground. Shortstop. Bobby's got it. He'll go to first. Gets his man. Bobby looking smooth over there at the sixth spot. Zach Sinders down on the 6-3. We go to the bottom of the seventh. When we come back here in K-Town. Welcome back here to K-Town, ladies and gents. Trevor Wilt here with you guys. Second pitch of the inning is fouled off to the right side, one and one Here in the seventh frame. Here's the pitch. There's a call strike, now one and two. And at the plate here is Adam Kelly, the designated hitter. Had a lot of switches apparently in the defensive setup for Keystone that we were, were not made aware of. Uh, but I believe that a lot of the guys are still the same guys um, out there on the diamond, but they just all flip flopped. 
J.D. Baird, who was uh, the catcher. He is now not the catcher. He's at second base. That pitch misses outside. Apparently Falwell, and he's still at first. Cancels in right. Pacomi's now at shortstop. Motone out there in center field. So we're still trying to figure out exactly where a couple other guys are supposed to be playing. But Adam Kelly, he's got an RBI single, an RBI fielder's choice that, sh again, should have been a single, and he scored a run, and he walked back in the first. So he's had a really productive day up until that at bat. As that's now four straight strikeouts to start the season here for Derek Hughes. Derek Hughes. Man's rolling out there. Here's the right. He's delivery. He misses upstairs. Here's the pitch. There's another call and strike. One on one. Ooh, that held the foot of somebody. I thought that was the umpire, the catcher. As the pitch to the plate is a ball. And there's a, another walk here on the day for J.D. Barrett. That's his second of the ball game. As R.J. Goldsberry will now come to the plate. So we don't know where Gold <coughs> excuse me, where Goldsberry is currently playing. Maybe we could just yell down to him and ask him, hey, where are you playing there, Bucko? He'll sky this one into the infield. As a shortstop will camp underneath it. Oh, he's not able to make the grab, but he's going to flip it to second. And he'll get the fielder's choice there. So again, the hometown kid not able to get the hometown roll to go into his glove. As again, after the one-out walk, J.D. Barrett is technically eliminated at second base. R.J. Goldsberry will reach on the fielder's choice. And Evan Falwell, the first baseman, will now stand in. He had a walk in the fifth and a strikeout in the second and the third. Evan Falwell, you know what I was I was looking for it earlier? And we didn't have it on their on their uh, sheet that they sent to us uh, for the Keystone College Giants. He is 275 pounds and six foot five. Again, do not want to find Evan Falwell in a Canapolis back alley. I can tell you that much. Evan Falwell standing in from the right side. Derek Hughes will deliver. This one's hit on the ground. Third baseman has it right at him. He'll go to first. And Hughes is able to get out of the one-on jam. He picks up strikeout number four on the day as we'll head into the eighth inning. When we come back, 6-2 hour score, the current lead, Keystone College.
To the eighth inning we go, six to two, the current score and the lead right now for Keystone. They're out there defensively as here at the dish is Mason Satterfield, the nine-hole man, Luke Erdman and Zach Perkins, two up next, 9-1-2 in the lineup. Here's the pitch to the plate. There's a call and strike. Again, hey, just working out the kinks. That's what we're doing here in Kannapolis. Having some fun up here in the press box and out here at Atrium Health Ballpark. Appreciate you guys being a, a part of the broadcast here tonight. As Satterfield will watch that one head to the backstop. One and two the count here in the top of the eighth inning. They have their work cut out for them. They trail by four. Six to two. Four hits on the day. Looking to do something against Nick Termini right here. That pitch misses low. As Satterfield had a strikeout back in the second inning. And it's good seeing some of our season ticket holders out here sitting in their actual seats as well. So they're just ready for again, any baseball. Ready for Cannonballers baseball. This one's hit on the ground right to the shortstop. And Bobby, he'll go right to the first baseman to the chest. Of the big man. And Satterfield is down for the third time here tonight. So Luke Erdman here in the eighth inning will step to the plate. Down to their last five outs. Leadoff man, he's 0 for 3. A ground out to the shortstop in the first. As this one's hit sharply to the shortstop. And Bobby, and he'll fire to first base, and he gets his man. Man, he's recorded almost every single out, I feel like, over the last two or three innings. Another 6-3 put out into the gloves there, Bobby Pacomi. So again, Perkins, he's the only batter in, the top, in their top three who has reached. He's reached on a walk in the six. Fly out in the center field in the third inning and a 5-3 put out in the first as Brian Wickman waits on deck. He'll come set and deliver. That misses upstairs. One and one. Coming set, here's the pitch. There's a called strike. Here to Perkins. Yeah, Salvino's got a single. Keener's got a single with a run scored. Zaletti's got a single with a run scored. And Cinders has an RBI double. And that scored in those runs back in the second inning. And there's a strike out there for Nick Termini. Picks up another K. It's his second of the evening in her place of Nathan Hinckley who went six innings gave up just four hits two runs one earned one walk and four K's we go to the bottom of the eighth when we come back six to two still the lead for Keystone
Welcome back here to Cape Town in Okanapas, North Carolina. Again, the D3 Showcase, the inaugural one. We have Washington and Lee and also Keystone College. Air cancel. On the left side of the plate, here's the pitch from the talented righty and Derek Hughes. This one's popped up in the infield. Who's got it? Shortstop being called off by the second baseman. Oh, no. And then also Zaletta ends up just calling off everybody, doing it himself. He looks a little irritated right now. I can guarantee you that much as him and Zach Sanders, they were both almost – they were both going after the ball at second base as Bobby Pacomi will come to the plate. He fouls off the first pitch to the backstop. But Zaletta and Cinders looks like they not very happy with each other. Gave each other the cold shoulder. I know Zaletta did miss that can of corn that came to him in the second. There was no harm done, though. That pitch is in the dirt. Two and one. Bobby showing off the hair to all the fans in attendance right now. As this one is laced into center field, coming in, the dive, it goes in and out of the diving effort of John Raymond. Almost a sports center top 10 play out there. But it's going to go down as a single in the books there to Bobby Pacomi. Second time that he's reached here today. He walked and scored a run back in the fourth. Struck out in the second. And tried to bunt his way on in the fifth inning. But to no avail by the catcher. And Jaden Keener. But he gets a one out single here in the eighth. As Jason Thomas. The leadoff man back into the batter's box. First pitch swung on and miss. And Jack Cope, three and two thirds, gave up six runs. Andrew Flood, an inning and a third, gave up no runs. And Derek Hughes has been pretty stellar. That pitch misses upstairs. Struck out the first three guys that he faced in the six. Struck out. One to start the seventh, so that was four straight. A walk, and he's given up now a single. This one is hit weakly to the right side and out of play. Out there in the concourse, bouncing around. And a pretty good lead over there at first base for Bobby Pacomi. Ooh, back into first base. In there safely. Chris Hadsel. He awaits on deck. Come and set a nice little knee bend. He'll come to the play. That one is golfed and foul down the third base side. So now to a one and two count. Getting good righty righty matchup right here. For Derek Hughes. One out, would love to get double play, but two speedy guys out there. The runner's going, ball at the plate, throw down a second, not in time. Bobby continues to get it done out there on the bases. That's now a two and two count. The hair just flying through the wind out there for Bobby Pacomi. He's becoming a fan favorite here at the D3 Showcase Tournament. That misses in the dirt. Maybe we could just give him the NIL deal. He could just be a, a cannonballer or just a, just a Canapolis baseball public figure. Bobby Pacomi. He's even got the name to go along with it. Well, come set. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss on the 3-2. Came back and got him. Collects his fifth strikeout of the night. And now Chris Hatzel. Well, step to the plate. 
Again, a single in the first inning, a stolen base. Single in the third inning. RBI sacrifice fly in the right field in the fourth. And a strikeout in the sixth. Ryder at second base. With two outs in the bottom of the eighth inning. He'll lace this one out in the right center field. Give a chase to Satterfield. He's looking up, and he's going to grab it at the warning track. A nice running grab out there for Mason as he's able to snag it before he runs into the wall out in the right center field. Hadsel is out for just the second time here today as we'll go in to the ninth inning. When we come back, a lot of work for Washington and Lee. The Generals, they need four runs. See what they can do it. To the ninth inning we go. Six to two is our score. And currently, Washington and Lee, they have their work cut out for them. They trail by four. First pitch called strike right here to Brian Wickman. It's going to be the meat of the order due up. Three, four, five. Brian Wickman, Mitchell, Salvino, and Jaden Keener. This one is scorched out in the left field, but the win will knock it right down and right into the left fielder's arms. And, man, I mean, if you hit any ball in the left field right now, the wind is going to knock it down. We've seen a couple drives here today where these things could easily be going to the warning track, if not the wall, or over. And the generals have not been able to get anything going on the ground as Wickman is out on the F7. We're out number one in the ninth. Salvino. We'll see that one in and out of the glove. Did have a single in the sixth inning. One of four hits on the day with three of them coming in the second inning. And a walk and a single in the sixth. But the Generals and Ted White in his fifth season were not able to do anything with it. This one's hit pretty hard down the third base side, diving, but it's foul. What a diving effort. Man, that was close. I went foul by... Just a couple inches. One for three here on the night. As Keener again, he's one for three. And so is Zaletta, who sits in the hole. Would love to see him come to the plate. This one's hit a mile in the air in the right. But again, that win, it's tricky. Going to be a tough play for whoever the right fielder is able to snag it, though. Nice play out there in the right. Just in foul ground. That's Derek Cancel out there in right. As Salvino is out on the F9, and now Keener will come to the plate. It's the last hope for the Generals. 6-2 to two in the ninth. Laid on the pitch there from Nick Termini. Again, has come in a pitch after Nathan Hinckley and has done a heck of a job. It was six innings, four hits, two runs, one earn, one walk, and four Ks for Hinkley. And now Termini is looking for the three-inning hold slash save. I don't have to look into that. 
See what that score was at that time. Here's the 0-2. And it's going to be fouled off to the right side. Tell you what, man, these boys, they got some energy out here, don't they? wonder if they're playing like this up there in Pennsylvania or up there in, in Lexington, Virginia. These guys are getting after it. They're having a great time dancing around, singing. They're relaxing out here in Kannapolis. Have the whole weekend to do so. Give him a two outs. Here's a 6-2. It misses. So now one and two. And six to two hour score to many. This one's hit right underneath his glove. Second baseman backhand off his glove as well. That's going to go down as a hit off the glove of the second baseman. As Jaden Keener will collect his second hit of the ball game. As now Ethan Zaletta will step to the plate. In the pitcher in Termini, as soon as it went underneath his glove, he like slammed, uh, it looked like he almost like slammed his glove down on the mat. He was he was ticked off at himself. And then again, the second baseman not able to pick it up, and then he nails Zaletta. As now John Raymond will come to the plate. First pitch, up and in. Looks like he just got out of the hand of the righty Termini and John Raymond. We'll come to the play, but that's not before. We're gonna have a meeting out there on the mound. So we'll go ahead and take a quick break with him. So we're getting after the hit by pitch and single. There's two guys on with two outs. Not done yet, says the Generals. Trailing by four with the tying run sitting on deck. It's Zach Sinders. Nick Termini trying not to see him. No one at third. Here's the pitch. Ooh, swung on a miss. A nice little possible slide piece set of the hands there of the town and Nick. Apparently we do have a pinch hitter for Washington Lee. This is Drew Larson, sophomore, six foot, 200 pounds, out of Glen Allen, Virginia. Ooh, I just missed the zone somewhere. One on one. So again, pinch hitter for John Raymond, who was 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. This one is hit pretty well, but fouled on the left side and way out of play. Good little swing right there from True Larson. So now one pitch away from capturing their first win of the season and their first game of the season. Termini, here it is. This one is swung on, driven out to center field. Tossing and turning, but he's able to make the grab over the left shoulder. And that is your ball game. Keystone is the winner here at game two of our Division Three Showcase at Atrium Health Ballpark. They win 6-2 to two over Washington and Lee University. So the Keystone College Giants, they get the big dub in their first game of the season by a score of 6-2. to two. They end up with eight hits and one error. It's five hits for Washington and Lee and no errors 
for the Generals. Tomorrow, first pitch at 10 a.m. It's going to be between Keystone and Marietta. At 2 p.m., first pitch, Marietta and Washington and Lee. And our nightcap will be at 6 o'clock between Keystone and Christopher Newport. On Sunday, our lone game will be between Washington and Lee and Christopher Newport. That first pitch in the last first pitch of the Division Three Showcase will be at 10 a.m. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in your final score, 6-2. Hope you enjoyed the game, enjoyed the broadcast, if not the outcome. And as usual, I'll leave you with this. Be the change that you want to see in the world. Love others. And if no one told you that they loved you today, I do. So long from Kannapolis. <laughs>